Hey class, we are about to start chapter three of The Incredible Journey. And where we last left, our friends, the cat and the two dogs, they were out on their own heading west to find their family. And they were sleeping in the woods and the old dog wasn't doing that well. He was exhausted from a full day of traveling. And the young dog was doing better and the cat was doing better, but the old dog was having a hard time. So here we go. In the cold hour before dawn, the bull terrier woke, then staggered painfully to his feet. He was trembling with cold and was extremely hungry and thirsty. Remember, this is the old dog, the bull terrier. He walked stiffly in the direction of the pool nearby, passing on his way the cat, who was crouched over something held between his paws. The terrier heard a crunching sound as the cat's jaws moved, and wagging his tail in interest, move up, moved over to investigate. The cat regarded him distantly, then stalked away, leaving the carcass, which is the body, but to the terrier, it was a disappointing mess of feathers only. He drank long and deeply at the pool, and on his return, tried the feathers again, for he was ravenous. He was so hungry. But they stuck in his, gu stuck in his gullet, and he retched them out. He nibbled at some stalks of grass. Then delicately, his lips rolled back over his teeth, pick picked, o picked a few overripe raspberries from a low bush. He had always liked to eat domestic raspberries this way, and though the taste was reassuringly familiar, it did nothing to appease his hunger. He was pleased to see the young dog appear presently. His w he wagged his tail and licked the other's face, then followed resignedly when a move was made toward the direction of the road. They, they were followed a few moments later by the cat, who was still licking his lips after his feathery breakfast. And the light in the in the gray of light of in the gray light of dawn, the trio continued down the side of the road until they reached a point where it took a right angled turn. Here they hesitated before a disused logging trail that led westward from the side of the road, its entrance almost concealed by overhanging branches. So they, they needed to keep going west. The leader lifted his head and appeared almost as though he were searching for the scent of something, some reassurance, and apparently he found it, for he led his companions up the trail between the overhanging trees. The going here was softer, the middle was overgrown with grass, and the ruts on either side were full of dead leaves. The close-growing trees, which almost met overhead, would afford, some sh would afford more shade when the sun rose higher. These were all considerations that the old dog needed, for he had been tired today even before he started, and his pace was already considerably slower. Both dogs were very hungry and watched enviously while the cat caught and killed a chipmunk while they were resting by a stream in the middle of the day. But what the old dog but when the old dog advanced with a hopeful wag of his tail, the cat growled, retreated into the bushes with his prey. Puzzled and disappointed, the terrier sat listening to the crunching sounds inside the bushes, saliva running from his mouth. He was so hungry and the cat didn't share, would not share. A few minutes later, the cat emerged and sat down, daintily cleaning his whiskers. The old dog licked the black Siamese face with his panting tongue and was affectionately patted on the nose in return. Restless with hunger, he wandered up the banks of the creek, investigating every rock and hollow, pushing his hopeful nose through tunnels of withered sedge and into the yielding earth of molehills. Sadly, he lay down by an unrewarding bear blueberry bush, drew his paws down tightly over his blackened face, then licked the dirt off them. The young dog, too, was hungry, but he would have to be on the verge of starvation before the barriers of deep-rooted Labrador heredity would be broken down. For generations, his ancestors had been bred to retrieve without harming, and there was nothing, the hunter, nothing of the hunter in his makeup. As yet, 
any killing was abhorrent to him. He drank deeply in the stream and urged his companions on. So a Labrador retriever retrieves what the hunter shoots. They are trained not to hurt it and not to kill themselves. So he did not want to do that. The trail ran high over the crest of this hilly wooded country and the surrounding countryside below was filled with an overwhelming beauty of color. The reds and vermilions of the occasional maples, pale birch and yellow poplar, and here and there, the scarlet cluster of mountain ash berries against the rich dark green background of spruce and pine and cedar. Several times they passed log ramps built into the side of the hill, picking their way across the deep ruts left by the timber sleighs below. And sometimes they passed derelict buildings in rank overground, overgrown clearings, old stables for the bush horses and living quarters for the men who had worked there a generation ago. The windows were broken and sagging and weeds were growing up between the floorboards and even one old rusty cook stove had firewood springing from the firebox. The animals, strangely enough, did not like these evidences of human occupation and skirted them as far as possible, hair raised along their backs. Late in the afternoon, the old dog's pace had slowed down to a stumbling walk, and it seemed as if only sheer determination were keeping him on his feet at all. He was dizzy and swaying, and his heart was pounding. The cat must have sensed this general failing, for he now walked steadily beside the dogs, very close to his tottering old friend, and uttered plaintive, worried bleats. Finally, the old dog came to a standstill by a deep rut half filled with muddy water. He stood there as if he had not even the strength to step around it. His head sagged and his whole body was trembling. Then, as he tried to lap the water, his legs seemed to crumple under him and he collapsed, half in and half out of the rut. His eyes were closed and his body moved only to, only to the long, shallow, shuddering breaths that came at widening intervals. Soon he lay completely limp and still. The young dog became frantic now. He whined as he stretched at the edge of the rut. He, then he nudged and pushed with his nose, doing everything in his power to rouse the huddled, unresponsive body. Again and again he barked, and the cat growled softly and continuously, walking back and forth and rubbing his whole length against the dirty, muddy head. There was no response to their attention. The old dog lay unconscious and remote. The two animals grew silent and sat by his side, disturbed and uneasy, until at last they turned and left him, neither looking back, the Labrador disappearing into the bushes where the crack of broken branches marked his progress further and further away, the cat stalking a partridge which had appeared at the side of the trail some hundred yards away and was pecking unconcernedly at the sandy dirt. Partridge is a bird. But at the shrill warning of a squirrel, it flew off across the trail with a sudden whirr into the trees while the cat was still some distance away. Undaunted, still licking his lips in anticipation, the cat continued around a bend in the trail in search of another and was lost to sight. 